or schematic that we want to be nice and clean. So I'm going to go back to my formatting palette. You'll see there are tabs across the top. I, I went back to the first one. And with this selected, I'm going to set a black line. I'm going to turn off the shadow. These may be hidden and you can expand them as you like. I'm going to make the line a little bit thinner. And then once I've done that, I'm going to right click and set auto shape default. So all lines that I draw from this point on will look like this. While I'm here, I'm going to right click again, edit points, and this is going to allow me to clean that up a little bit. All right. So now I have half of my schematic drawn. I'm going to select it. Holding down Option, I think it, it may be Alt on a PC. You could also copy and paste, but I'm just going to hold down Option and drag and hold down Shift to align it. And that's going to give me a perfect duplicate. Going back to my palette where the Rotate option is, I'm going to pick Flip Horizontal. And so now I have a two scale schematic of the front of my garment. If this piece is knit in the round, I may want to indicate where the back neck is. So first I'll group these items. Right click and group. There's also grouping up in some of the menus and on the side here you can get to it in here, but right click is fastest for me. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then back to my drawing tools back to free form, I can go ahead and draw my line. Double click and then click off and you can see that the, the formatting, it didn't jump back to the blue shadow that's the default because I set the new default here, set auto shape default, it drew a matching line. For sleeves, you're going to have to decide what your style is for drawing sleeves. To get a really accurate representation, it generally makes sense to draw your sleeves straight out, but that takes up a lot of space. And when you lay a garment flat, this little area usually gets sort of tucked in. The, um, the shaping under the arm sort of gets tucked in if the sleeves are going down. So you have to kind of decide how you want to approximate it. What I generally do is, is sort of split the difference and, and I'll just draw, you know, a rough approximation of the sleeve, which is not my favorite. I like to be as exact as possible, but there you go. Uh, if you like your sleeve, and again, I got some curvy lines I didn't really intend for, so I can edit points and adjust those. If I'm happy with it, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the body. I'm going to option drag, or you can copy and paste, and then I'm going to flip it. Nudge it into place, and then I select everything, and I group it. Oops, I meant to group it. Voila, one piece. So I have my schematic here. The next thing I need to do is decide if I want to indicate any any detailing. I might put in dart lines, I might put in um, a placket or buttons. So if I go back here I choose just this straight line tool, I can draw a line and I could format this to be a little bit thinner and a different color. And these would be things that you don't want to compete with the text that you'll put on the page, but that you want to indicate for people's reference. So I will bring this item forward, bring to front, and that's going to keep um, the gray line from overlapping the black line there. And then I can add in some buttons. And let's say I make those a little bit thinner too and then I can option drag those down 
and that can give people a reference point for various detailing. That's totally optional, you know, do it if you like, don't do it if you don't like. I, I usually put those in just so people can see how it'll look. The next thing I would do is to add my dimension lines. So that would be all the points that indicate the, the dimensions of the document, of the um, design itself. So I can go back over here, and I'm going to choose this double arrow tool. I'm not sure how, how obvious it is, but if you wait for the tooltip to come up, you can see it's a double arrow tool. And I'll draw a line. And then back in the formatting, under Style, go to More Lines. And what we have is the option to set the line width, which I generally like to make a little bit smaller. And I can do Beginning and End Styles. And within Beginning and End, there are a whole bunch of, of further options. So pick the one you like, press OK, and you'll see that it, it automatically changes the line for you. If you need to edit that line, if you wanted to make it a little bit shorter, you can click and adjust it. Holding down Shift will snap it, and then when you're done, just click off. So that would give me my length, and then once I have that done, I can set a new Auto Shape Default and any further lines I draw will match. You'll have to click the line tool each time you draw a line, which is not the same as, as Illustrator where it keeps the tool active. You'll, you'll have to keep doing it. So you can put in all your lines. Anything you want to indicate. And once you're ready, you can add in text box. And especially with Microsoft Word, where you don't have quite as much control over formatting, I actually prefer to put a, um, just a letter to indicate what dimension it, I'm um, referencing here. So this might be the A dimension, and then off to the side, I'll list what A is. A is the shoulder width, and it's 2 to 8 inches wide, and blah, blah, blah. So you can do it any way you like. You can go ahead and paste in all your dimensions right here, or you can do what I'm doing here and make um, option dragging, and just make um, reference to, to letters. Oops. Sorry about that. A little jumpy. Um, just put a, a key in and, and reference it off on another page or off to the side. Um, the nice thing about this is that you can then scale the schematic and the text separately, which may come in handy. So that, in a nutshell, is creating schematics in Microsoft Word.